what's up ladies and gentlemen welcome back another week has gone by a little bit too fast but good to be here anyway i want to talk about three major mistakes beginners make when they first start playing let's talk about it okay so first and foremost one of the biggest mistakes is plucking up from the string instead of playing through the string until your finger lands on the next string a lot of beginners will play this And the bad thing about that is not only will you not be as clean when you play, but it'll take more time to get to the string, get back down to the string when you go to pluck another note. If your finger is already raised away from the fretboard or away from the strings, you don't have that much time to get back down. So that's one of the major mistakes, playing through the string. Just a simple exercise is playing open notes. So volume off, here we go. Two, one, two. You can do it the opposite way. One, two, one, two. Now, if you're noticing now, when you play the first string, you don't have anything to play against. You can actually play against the actual body of the bass and bring your finger touching the body of the bass here. Also, if you notice, when I play down the strings, my thumb moves along with it. So it starts off up here on the pickup. See the move? I move from the pickup to the first string. So that's a little way to help you to be able to conquer that technique. And it may seem small, but trust me, it makes the world of a difference. On to number two. So number two is something that a lot of people struggle with now. And I talked about this before in the past. It's called the seesaw effect. So seesaw meaning when you play, the rest of your hands go up. So when you play the first finger or any note, doesn't matter. The rest of your fingers fly up. And the opposite goes for when you're playing on your fourth finger. So I'll give this one the same reason that I did the first one. And when you're playing here and your fingers are up like this, it takes more time to come down to the fretboard, hence decreasing the speed that you could potentially have. So you definitely want to work on that. And one exercise that you can do, I'll link it up here in the cards. I've gone over this before or in the description. You can do a simple chromatic exercise, two, one, three, two, four, three. That'll help your fingers stay closer to the fretboard. Let me do it again. Two, one, three, two, four, three. It doesn't matter where you start this exercise. You can start it on the second fret, start it on the seventh fret. It doesn't matter. Two, one, three, two, four, three. Also do it backwards. Three, two, two, three, one, two. And just keep that same concept for every single string. I'll go more in depth in it in a separate tutorial and a separate lesson, but that's the gist of the exercise. That'll help that seesaw effect. So number three on this list of bad habits is not really a physical thing. It's more of a mindset. It's thinking that your hands are too small. You have no idea how many times I hear this from beginners thinking that their hands are too small to play the bass and they go to guitar because they think guitar is the way to go because it's smaller. That's beyond the truth. So check it out. Just for an example, I'm going to use myself. When I started playing, I was like 12 years old or something, 11, 12. I can't remember. Anyway. I didn't have hands the size of Kawhi Leonard's hands, basketball reference. Anyway, I mean, I was a kid, so I had to adapt to whatever bass that I was playing. I had a full size bass in the beginning. It was a beginner bass, but I had a full size bass. It wasn't the micro basses or anything like that. So I was a kid playing bass. My hands weren't huge. So you have to get out of that mindset. When you're playing bass, I see this all the time. I mean, just straining to get the note. A lot of beginners have this mindset and I get it. I understand you want to be able to stretch or reach the note if you're playing a scale or something like that, but you don't have to. You can easily shift up the bass, unplant that anchor in the back because this is what's happening back here. And it's trying to stay right there in order to stretch to the note, but you can easily shift, boom, boom. I have to do this now to this day. You know, I have to shift and I don't want to stretch my hand that much, even though over time my reach has gotten ridiculously long, but you can stretch. It's all right. You can, well, not stretch. You can shift. It's okay to shift, right? So we got just playing a major scale in first position, especially when it comes to that pinky or that fourth finger. And 
And one thing that I recommend in the beginning for beginners to play, I know it's a little far-fetched, but to be able to play a two octave scale. That way you have no choice but to shift up the fretboard. And it makes it a little bit easier, makes you more comfortable with shifting versus trying to stay in one spot and play the notes that are down here in this region. So that was a list of three major mistakes that I see beginners make all the time. And that's just three of them. There are plenty more, but we'll talk about that later. One more beginner mistake. I'll throw this in, it's a bonus mistake. It's not joining and becoming a member of the Bass Nation Academy. Okay, shameless plug, don't judge me. Anyway, if you're looking to enhance and improve your bass playing skills, I strongly suggest that you check out the Bass Nation Academy. Links will be in the description. We have live weekly classes, uh, Q&A video question sections where I give you personal feedback. It's like having a one-on-one -on -one teacher. But anyway, I'll leave you to check that out. There's so much more that I'm not even mentioning that I'm forgetting right now. But anyway, check it out, see how you like it. Make sure you let me know if you're coming from YouTube. I always like to see my YouTube subscribers transition over into the Academy. That'll be a great thing. But anyway, I'll see you guys next week as always. Make sure you know so come on out clean, clear, and precise, and I'll check you guys in the next one. Peace.